I had these cheat days and I would obsess over where I was going to eat. And when I would go to the restaurant, I would always like take photos of like that dish. And um, when Instagram started, I just saw this opportunity, which actually ended up a full-time business. Hey everyone, welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Bubble Up. I'm your host, Krista, and today I am interviewing Jessica Hirsch, food photographer, New York based blogger, and I'm so excited to hear all of her tips today about how we as regular people can be taking amazing photos with our phone. So, really excited to have you here, Jessica. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Got my yeah. coffee. What are you, so you're drinking coffee over there? We're having our breakfast drinks yep. together. Second coffee of the day already. Nice. Um, I put a little coconut milk in it. It's delish. It's like pretty early in the morning. I feel like we were emailing hours ago. So I've, we've uh, had time to get um, <laughs> Crazy enough, I'm up at like six o'clock every morning. So I had my first cup then and this is my second. <laughs> All right. Well, clearly you are a hustler and I think it shows actually in your work. So I want to introduce you a little bit further to people who don't know you yet. Everyone, Jessica is part of the Sony Alpha Collective. So her work is really amazing. And yeah, she's, she's totally focused on food and travel. Um, her main account is Cheat Day Eats, which is what it sounds like. All kinds of cheat day foods. Um, definitely will make you hungry after you go check it out. She's also got your room service and a hot buns club. So a bunch <laughs> of awesome accounts on Instagram with again, amazing food photos. Jessica, I want to, I want to ask you how you do it and, and how you got started actually, because is it just, is it a natural born talent to be taking photos with your phone or? How does, how does it work? How'd you get started? Yes. So the story is a little funny because actually I uh, was a high school math teacher for seven years. So I definitely did not anticipate um, having the career I have now. Um, so food photography actually came a lot later in my life, although I've been documenting and taking photos of um, anytime I would go to restaurants for a while. Uh, I was actually teaching for a few years in New York City, and at that time, um, and actually for about 10 years before that, I had these cheat days, and I would obsess over where I was going to eat, um, and when I would go to the restaurants, I would always like take photos of like that dish, and um, when Instagram started, I just saw this opportunity to share where I was eating with my friends, uh, which actually ended up turning into a full-time business, so I was taking photos on my phone. Uh, and we, you know, I would post like the most indulgent, like mac and cheese in New York city and people would go crazy and start to like it. And I, I was just getting more followers and I was like, wow, this is really crazy. Um, so actually a few years into it, uh, Brian, my fiance and partner, got me a camera, a professional camera. And so I was, you know, just using it automatic, taking photos. And even with that, I noticed a lot of people were noticing the quality of the content I was taking and how it had changed from when I was taking it on my phone. Um, and so I started to get really excited about creating uh, content that people were going to really notice the difference um, in comparison maybe to other accounts. Um, and just in my personal self, I like loved seeing that quality and the sharpness and the photos. Um, so I started to teach myself what it meant to take a great photo and a great video. I was researching on YouTube and talking to other photographers. And, uh, you know, as I grew as a photographer, I noticed, so did my account and people really noticed. Um, and that made me proud. So such a cool story. And it's really inspiring because I love that you said it was actually like a couple of years into the journey that you, that you got, you know, a, a camera, camera. So you obviously were doing something right for, you know, the, the first half of that journey before you actually got your camera. What are some of your tips for actually finding that amazing food to photograph? Because there's probably a difference between what, no matter how good your lighting is, if the food itself isn't beautiful, like maybe the photo is not going to be that great. So where do you find all this awesome food that you're documenting? Well, I find it from different places. So I do a lot of research and 
Uh, Instagram's definitely one of them. And then, um, like, especially when I'm traveling in other countries, I find that there's a lot of different like blogs and websites and trip advisors. So I find it from all different places. And, um, usually when I'm going to a different destination to be able to kind of create like a folder, like back in the day, I actually have found this before. I used to like print out stuff and put it in a folder <laughs> and that's like, now I actually use bubble up to help organize my information. So I have everything online in one place versus having like different worksheets of like, I used to, um, funny enough because I'm so crazy. I would look up all the different, uh, translations for different food items. So when I would go to a restaurant, I would know how to order. <laughs> That's cute. I love that. Like, also like what hotel you're staying at, different restaurants in that area, a map, um, uh, different blogs of people who went there before and have a recommendation. So it's a real, like I also can share that too. And then once I go, I can add to it and then I share it off to other people. So if you wouldn't mind, I would love to hear some of your best tips on, um, how I can how I can use this to take some nice photos of my food because mine always come out terrible. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> There's a lot good. of simple tips that really will change the game. First off, if you are trying to start an Instagram account, one of the first things you're going to want to think of is your style, I guess, because you know if you're planning on posting a lot of food, and I get this message a lot, like I just started my account. How do I, you know? uh think about how to take a food photo now style is something but if you're just doing for fun and you want to share a better photo with your friends the thing you want to think about first is lighting um obviously natural lighting is something you have during the day that is free right so you can take your food near a window so actually funny enough like being home obviously everyone's cooking more and baking and they want to show off their the dishes that they're making at home um so the, my kitchen does not have the best light for some reason, even though there's windows in there. So I usually take my food to the living room, which actually has better light in there. So finding a good window with natural light coming in, not direct sun. So that's really important because that's usually going to create too harsh of a shadow and it's going to hit the sun on your food just isn't flattering. Um, so lighting is definitely one of the first things you want to think of. Now, obviously, you're making dinner, it's dark. So natural light is not an option. Um, but there's a lot of alternatives. Um, one of the things that a lot of people have now are like the little selfie lights. So even using that right above your phone is key. That's going to give you the light that you need. Um, and then also if you see you have a, a quarantine with someone else and they have a, a cell phone, you could use their light right above. And so, yeah, finding that light that's, you know, uh, going to help illuminate your photo uh but not be too harsh you don't want to be like right on top of it Great. but there are also um i always say there's like this little mean a mini light um i think it's like 45 dollars, and i bring that to restaurants and it's like amazing how great it is nice so but like like i said you know i was just thinking about where the light's coming from mm -hmm. and so you can also really determine how much uh the light hits your food is gonna also create a different image so sometimes you know, people love that like dark uh, shadow and it creates like this dark moody image or you can have more light and that's going to be like airy and less shadows. Mm. So lighting is key. Um, next, then the next thing you want to think about is composition and angles. Um, I always say like you want to know the ingredients or you want your audience or your friends to know what ingredients were incorporated in that dish. Mm. So for example, a pizza is best when you have that overhead angle so you can actually see all the ingredients where the burger when you shoot it from the side you could see the different layers and don't be afraid to play with your food because that's what's going to really allow the viewer to know what's inside so for example if i have a burger and the you know tomatoes all the way in the back and i don't see it all i do is just kind of uh, move it up to the front so when i take the photo someone knows there's a tomato that i added to that burger and that's key there you go, kids. Permission to play with your food. <laughs> the thing we've all no, been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes I feel guilty about doing that at a restaurant, but like at home, like whatever. You could stand on a chair, you could be crazy, you know, your food will be cold, you're the one eating it, so. <laughs> yeah, and with everybody in quarantine, like why why not try to make your hobby into, into something awesome? I think those are really fun tips and 
I may or may not try them on my next meal. So let's see. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait yeah. to see. <laughs> yeah, I'll send them over. It will just be be nice on your on your judgment. <laughs> I'm getting there. You've also done a bunch of research on staying fit while also having all this cheat day food, right? Did I say that correctly? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah if you it's could talk a about that. huge passion of mine. Like fitness and health have always been a part of my life. Hence the name cheat day eats. Mm -hmm. It has a fitness background. I was a personal trainer for a few years. Um, and so over the course of the last, you know, few years, I have accumulated um, some of my favorite recipes that are healthy, my grocery list, uh, some of my favorite workouts. And a lot of people have been asking me and I found that I would spend, you know, five or 10 minutes writing this whole long explanation about like how cheat day is a cheat day. And like, this is how I practice my normal everyday life. I have salads and this is how I start my day. And so I actually recorded a bunch of videos and I put them in bubble up. And then I've been sharing that because I feel like there's so much to say about it. It's not just like a few sentences. And I really wanted people to know that um, I do eat healthy. I do care about what I eat. I do work out. And this isn't just magic. I'm not just lucky. Like, and you can eat indulgent food too and enjoy the food you love and not feel guilty about it. That is a great message. Yeah. You've, you've obviously got a lot of knowledge about, um, about that specific topic about staying healthy, but yeah, also about about photography and doing the research and turning it into a career and everything. So um, if somebody that's watching this has a question about one of those things, about food photography, about staying fit um, despite the cheat days, what is <laughs> the best way for them to reach out to you? So cheat day eats on all platforms. Okay, cool. Super easy. Right. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, Jessica, thank you so much for, for joining the call and for thank teaching you. us all about uh, your tips and tricks. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. Bye.